So, this will give us the value of the resultant that is V A. So, 4.77 square plus 8.66 square under root that will give us 9.886. So, our resultant R is 9.886 kilo newtons, right. Now, one thing more is left and that is nothing but the inclination of this particular resultant force. How can you find out the inclination? If you remember method of resolution, if I want to find out the inclination of the resultant R, resultant R can be found out by finding out the value of alpha. How do we get the value of alpha? 10 alpha that is equal to sigma v upon sigma h. How can we get that? If I draw a parallelogram, I will draw a line parallel to V A, I will draw a line parallel to H A. So, a right angled triangle is obtained. If I want to find out, so 10 alpha that is equal to what? V A upon H A. So, I can get the inclination alpha. So, I think uh, the numerical is clear. Very important step is a free body diagram. If you have drawn a free body diagram correct, I think there will be no mistake in solving a problem because then we have to apply simple equation sigma h, sigma v and sigma moment is equal to 0. Right? Now, the second problem which I am going to cover is a support which is inclined at a particular angle and I will take again our same beam that is a simply supported beam. So, now in this particular beam, we are going to take a GVL along with an inclined load as well as inclined support. Right? So, if I take a problem, we have got a second problem and that second problem has got a simply supported beam and in this simply supported beam, one is a uh, hinge support and second is a roller support and this roller support is inclined at some angle. Suppose we take that inclination equal to 30 degree. So, is it is inclined at an angle of 30 degree with respect to horizontal. Then we have got a GVL loading that is gradually varying loading of intensity 20 kilo Newton per meter for a span of 3 meters for a span of 3 meters and then we have got one inclined load one inclined load of intensity of intensity 80 kilo Newtons at an angle of 75 degree. 80 kilo Newtons at an angle of 75 degree. The distance of the inclined load is 2 meters from the support. So, it is 2 meters and this distance that is 1 meter. We name this as A, B, C and D. Right? So, you can see this diagram. This diagram is basically uh, very important because students make maximum mistake when there is a inclined support given. Now, our very first step will be to draw a free body diagram. So, to draw a free body diagram, we have to take all the points in the downward direction. We have to take all the points in the vertical downward direction. Right? Then we have to draw a horizontal beam. To start with, first is our support at A. Uh, I will show over here the inclination of the support. So, suppose this is our support, roller support at A. Right? This is roller support at A and its inclination with horizontal is 30 degree its inclination with horizontal is 30 degree. 
Now, if you remember in the last lecture, I told that whenever we have got a reaction, it is always produced at an angle of 90 degree. That means, whenever two surfaces come in contact with each other, a reaction is produced or a force is produced and it is always at an angle of 90 degree. Right? So, over here, what are the two surfaces? The first surface is the roller and second is our surface at which the support is inclined. So, exactly at an angle of 90 degree, a reaction will be produced. Right? Now, the reaction will be produced in the direction opposite to the motion. So, this will be the direction of our reaction and as it is A, so we can write down as reaction R and support A. So, R A. Now, if I join these two lines, if I join these two lines, right, it forms a right angled triangle. So, this will be 90 degree, this is 30 degree. So, how much this angle will be? 180 minus 90 minus 30 and that is equal to how much? 60 degree. So, this angle will be 60 degree. Now, we can see that this is the common line that is this line will be a common line, this is horizontal line and this is our beam. So, inclination of reaction R A will be also equal to 60 degree because which type of angle it is? Alternate angles, right? This is a common line, this is horizontal, both are parallel to each other. So, if this angle is 60, this angle will be also equal to 60 degree, right? Now, our reaction is inclined at an angle of 60 degree with respect to with respect to horizontal line. So, I will now stress our reaction. So, this is our reaction R A, right? So, I have to resolve my reaction R A into two components. One will be vertical component and another will be horizontal component. Now, what is our thumb rule? Okay, force is inclined with respect to which axis? So, our reaction R A is inclined with respect to horizontal axis at an angle of 60 degree. So, my horizontal component will be what? R A cos 60 and my vertical component will be what? R A sin 60. So, in my free body diagram, I will have my one vertical component as R A sin 60 and one horizontal component as R A cos 60. Okay? Now, we come to our next that is inclined force, 80 kilo Newton force, it is inclined at an angle of 75 degree with respect to horizontal axis. So, with respect to horizontal axis, it is inclined. So, we can resolve the force, we can resolve the force, we can resolve the force into two components that is one is horizontal component and another is vertical component. Force is moving inward. So, the components will also move inwards. So, this will be 80 sin 75 and this will be 80 cos 75. So, 80 sin 75 that is uh, 80 sin 75 that is equal to Seventy seven point two seven. So, we put it as 80 sin 75 over here, we will show one vertical reaction that is 80 sin 75 and horizontal component 80 cos 75. Okay? and the distance between support A and support B that is equal to 2 meters. So, we will show over here 
2 meters. Then we come to point C, the distance between C and B that is equal to 1 meter. So, we show it as 1 meter. Then we come to support D. Before coming to support D, in between C and D, which type of loading is there? It is a gradually varying type of load. So, if you remember for a gradually varying load, if I want to convert the gradually varying load in terms of a concentrated load or a point load, I have to take the area of a triangle. So, to start with, if this is the intensity 20 kilo Newton per meter, so that is taken as nothing but the height h and the base is taken as the distance at which GVL is acting that is 3 meters. So, our point load will be or equivalent point load will be 1 upon 2 into base into height. So, that is equal to 30 kilo Newtons. Now, this 30 kilo Newtons is nothing but the concentrated load or a point load and this concentrated or point load will act at the C G. right? Now, we know how do we get the C G for a triangle? To get a C G for a triangle, we have to intersect the medians. How do we get the medians? So, apex and center of the opposite line, then center of the opposite line and apex and similarly center of the opposite line and apex. So, this is the point where the centroid lies for a triangle and from 90 degree, from 90 degree the distance is taken as L by 3. So, definitely this distance will be equal to 2 L by 3, right. Now, what is L over here? L is 3 meters. So, 3 by 3 that will be equal to how much? 1 meter and this will be equal to what? 2 into 3 divided by 3 that is equal to 2 meters. So, we can show that from point A at a distance of 2 meters, a concentrated load of 30 kilo Newton is acting. So, from here at a distance of 2 meters, we can show a concentrated load of intensity 30 kilo Newton is acting and the left out distance will be 1 meter. And finally, we come to our support D. Support D you can see it is a hinge support. So, support D is a hinge support. So, we will have two reactions that is V D or R D and H D. Right? Now, what will be our second step? So, we have completed our free body diagram. The second step will be to apply the conditions of equilibrium. So, to start with, we start with applying our conditions of equilibrium. First condition of equilibrium is sigma h is equal to 0. If the h d is moving in positive x direction plus 80 cos 75 is moving in the negative direction minus and our third reaction r a cos 60 is again moving in the negative direction negative or negative x axis that is equal to 0. So, what we get h d that is equal to 80 cos 75, 80 cos 75 that is nothing but 20.70. So, 20.70 minus R A cos 16. This is our equation number 1. This is our equation number 1. Now, we come to our second condition of equilibrium that is sigma V is equal to 0. So, what is our sign convention for sigma v? If the force is moving in the vertical upper direction, it will be taken as positive and if force is moving in the downward direction, it will be taken as negative. To start with first is R a sin 60, it is moving in the upper direction positive. Then second is 80 sin 75 in the vertical downward direction negative. Third is our triangular load that is 30 kilo Newton in the vertical direct downward direction negative 
and fourth is our V D reaction acting in the upper direction positive that is equal to 0. So, we get R A sin 60 plus V D that is equal to R A sin 60 plus V D that is equal to 107.27. 107.27 0.27 kilo newtons. This is our equation number 2. Now, our third equation will be sigma moment is equal to 0. So, for sigma moment is equal to 0, sigma moment is equal to 0, we have to take moment about a support. So, moment about support A, moment about support A to start uh, sorry support D. To start with, we start with R A sin 60. So, R A sin 60 is vertical. So, perpendicular distance will be horizontal up to our point where we are taking the moment. So, R A sin 60 into 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So, R A sin 60 into 6. Now, I think you all are aware how we are taking negative and positive right hand thumb rule. Second is 80 sin 75 into what is the perpendicular distance up to point D. So, up to point D the perpendicular distance from 80 sin 75 is 1, 2, 3 and 4. So, into 4 it will move in the clockwise direction. So, positive then third is 30 and distance from 30 till the point we are taking moment that is 2. So, 30 into 2 again clockwise. So, positive that is equal to 0. What about 80 cos 75 and R A cos 60? Yes, the line of action of both the forces are coinciding at the point where we are taking the moment. So, that will be equal to 0. So, in the next lecture, we will study regarding the shear force and bending moments. I think uh, you will be easily able to solve the problems for support reactions. Thank you.